This is Company Saturdays. Every Saturday, we present you with another company. Today, we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about Nescafe. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello, Aluxers. Guess what? It's time to spill the beans. Today, we're talking about the number one coffee brand in the world, Nescafe. Nescafe was created in 1939, and since then, the brand has gone worldwide. One of the most striking qualities they have as a brand is their resilience. When their sales started to majorly decline in 2009, they re-strategized, brought something different to the masses, and kept on growing. There's a reason their coffee is number one. Nescafe coffee has been known to give both a relaxing and a stimulating feel as well. It increases mental alertness, is absorbed by the body in 30 minutes, and its effects can last for an average of three and a half hours. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. But let's just get to it and take a closer look at this company, shall we? Here are the 15 things you didn't know about Nescafe. Number 1. Nescafe was created out of necessity. In 1930, the Brazilian government approached the Nestle company to demand that they work on another recipe for instant coffee production. This was following a fall in coffee sales and the excess harvest that was stacked up unsold in Brazilian warehouses. This recipe was for the purpose of improving coffee intake and increasing the coffee export level that was quickly depleting and affecting the economy. The first instant coffee was invented by Satori Kato in 1901, but it was a disaster. It was not properly brewed, and over 80% of the people who tried it didn't like it. Number 2. The success of Nescafe was not instant. The Nestle chairman at the time, Louis Staples, began researching along with his team. After three years of research, they discovered coffee mixed with sugar and milk, if dried to a powder, had a long shelf life. The shelf life was one of the reasons they were given the project by the government. It was a good start, even if they weren't there just yet. It was later discovered that the preserved coffee mix was not easily soluble. Their target was creating a preserved mix that was soluble. Despite a slow start, the researchers didn't give up and kept experimenting with the recipe. Number 3. Dr. Mortenthaler invented Nescafe in 1938. Dr. Mortenthaler observed that the coffee taste was better preserved in sweetened milk than unsweetened milk. He also observed that coffee held up longer after being exposed to high temperatures and pressure. He came to a conclusion with these two hypotheses that the best aroma would come from a soluble coffee enriched with carbohydrates. He produced this a year later and presented it to the board. It was the same idea he had conceived a year prior, but this time he dissolved the powder in water. Number 4. There was a lot of contemplation before the name was formed. Considering how poorly coffee had fared in the previous years, it became a difficult task finding a befitting name for the product. It had to be attractive and catchy. It had to exude a lot of positivity. So Nestle picked the first few letters of its name and added cafe, which is the French word for coffee. And voila, it worked like a charm. Number 5. Nescafe played a major role during World War II. The soldiers during World War II used Nescafe as a major source of their strength. A very large portion of Nescafe, about three quarters of the production, was consumed in the UK, the US, and Switzerland. Beside the fact that it was dehydrated and had carbohydrates to improve its flavor, it also had a longer shelf life, which enabled it to be stored for a very long period of time. The supply rate was so high at the time that two more production facilities were opened in the U.S. in 1943 to meet the high demand. What's more, the bulk of the supplies went to the U.S. troops in World War II. Number 6. Nestle had spread from Brazil to over 85 countries. 
After a few little adjustments here and there with the recipe, a soluble coffee was introduced on April 1, 1938. The equipment for coffee extraction was set up by Nestle following the launch of the product in Switzerland. The process entailed brewing at a really high temperature. Then, the mist of the solution was sprayed into the equipment for coffee extraction. Carbohydrates were added, and then all the ingredients were dehydrated at high temperatures. Since its introduction, Nescafe has spread over 85 countries, with 413 branches in all. Number 7. About 5,500 cups of Nescafe are drank every second. 5,500 cups of Nescafe are drank every second around this world. That's quite impressive, considering this coffee was just created in partnership with the government to curb wastage and loss as well. Now it's become one of the most lucrative brands to have ever existed. The consumption rate is beaten by none other, except for Coca-Cola. As far as coffee is concerned, Nescafe tops the list. Number 8. Nestle was sued in 2005. As they always say, no glory without story. So, in February 2005, Nestle faced a challenge. They were sued by Russell Kristoff for using his image without permission on their Taster's Choice label. The thing is, they used this image for five solid years, from 1998 to 2003, and he did not sue until 2005. Anyway, the supposed $15.6 million that was to be paid to Mr. Russell was reversed in 2009 by the Supreme Court. They were also sued successfully by an English band in 2003 for using the band's song without permission in a TV ad. They paid €500,000 in compensation to Oxfam. Number 9. The increased demand for Nescafe led to a new kind of coffee machine. In 2006, Nescafe Dolce Gusto was introduced in Switzerland, and a year later, in Spain, came a new kind of coffee maker that could make coffee without the stress of any preparation. It can switch from hot to cold based on the choice of the user. This was invented because of the popularity of Nescafe in the country. Number 10. Nestle is currently investing in young people, farmers, and NGOs. The Nescafe 2020 plan involves a $500 million investment by 2020. Nestle introduced this plan in Mexico with new objectives that are all focused towards making an impact and adding value. The objectives are aimed at improving farm economics, improving labor rights, and creating new sourcing targets. They've been interacting with farmers by creating Farmer Connect chains, which have enabled accurate assessments without bias. They also focus on non-labor rights by partnering with NGOs to identify and eliminate issues in the value chain. And Aluxers, if you're enjoying this video, then why not check out one of our other videos about the top 10 most expensive coffees in the world. You can watch it by clicking in the top right corner. Number 11. Nescafe is not just a brand of coffee. Over the years, Nescafe has been able to build more success and expand their product base since their coffee's release in 1939. Nescafe offers not just the original brand of coffee, but also many of its other varieties of products ranging from espresso, cappuccinos, lattes, hot chocolate, golden blends, decaf, and original unsweetened. All these products are under the umbrella name of Nescafe. Number 12. The Red Revolution of Nescafe was a major turnaround for sales to young people. In June 2014, a campaign was launched by Nescafe titled Red Revolution with the slogan, It All Starts With Nescafe. It was channeled towards the young people who were deemed to be largely responsible for the decline in Nescafe demand and sales in previous years. They preferred the fresh coffee sold in chains like Starbucks. The Red Revolution movement was launched with the image of a red mug and a block mark called Hub. 
All these products were launched with a new ad campaign with the same visual identity, communication and digital strategy worldwide. Their aim was to change the orientation of young people concerning Nescafe. Number 13. Nescafe is the first ever coffee to have left planet Earth. In 1953, Nescafe became the official coffee of the first persons that climbed Mount Everest, and the coffee made it all the way to the top of the mountain with Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay. That's not all, though. Nescafe has also been to the moon. Yes, to the moon and back. There are graphics and images to prove this as well. In 1969, Neil Armstrong and Apollo 2 chose Nescafe as their official drink for their trip to the moon. It's also important to note that Nescafe did not reach this height because of the name only, but the quality of the drink and its positive effects. Number 14. The Gold Blend Series Ad Trended for Six Years Nescafe Gold Blend had an ad campaign with 45-second installments from 1987 to 1993. It featured two people who met and fell in love over a cup of Nescafe. It was a series of ads which kept people wondering what would happen next with the main product being constantly on display in each series. From the 1990s, a version of the same ad was produced for the American market for the Taster's Choice product. It was called the Taster's Choice Saga. It was changed in years later to another series, which ran for just six installments and stopped in 1997. The ad was responsible for over a 50% increase in sales in the Gold Blend coffee in the US and the UK. Number 15. Nescafe is the 31st most valuable drink in the world. Nescafe ranks 31st on the Forbes list of the world's most valuable drinks in 2018. It's up slightly from its rank of 32 in 2016. It was also ranked number one among the best Swiss brands in 2015 and 2016. They took 7th place in 2018 on the Top 50 Brand Footprint Global Ranking. Nescafe continues to find ways to be relevant in the ever-competitive coffee market. Well, Alexers, that wraps up the 15 things you didn't know about Nescafe. Now that you've learned some more about the brand, we'd love to know. Do you think instant coffee really has a future with brands like Starbucks and Costa Coffee taking the world by storm? Let us know in the comments. And of course, thanks for sticking around with us. Here's your bonus fact. Number 16. Taster's Choice was a popular variety of Nescafe in the US and Canada. A lot of attention was focused on developing the Taster's Choice Nescafe products in order to create a popular product for the United States. It is still said to be the most popular of the Nescafe products in Canada and the United States to date. It's also the best freeze-dried coffee in the Israeli market. It even beat out the popularity of the original Nescafe coffee when it was introduced in 1966. It is still, however, sold as a separate brand under Nescafe, but is higher priced and of better quality. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.